What's up YouTube and welcome back to another episode of Homebrew Subaru. In this episode I will be doing a compression and leak down test on this RV26. What's up everyone? So like I mentioned, I will be doing a compression test and leak down test on Tyler's uh, Skyline GTR. The, uh, there isn't a known issue, it's just he eventually is going to have to have this car tuned and the tuner wants to know what the compression and leak down numbers are. Make sure he's got a good engine to start with. So that makes complete sense to me. The job is very similar to two videos ago when I had the ignition out of my RB20. The 26 is extremely similar, almost identical. The parts are interchangeable. Um, so it's just a bunch of Allen screws on the top, ignition cover, and the igniter. All that stuff comes out of the way. And then the coils will all have to come out, the spark plugs will all have to come out. And then I'll have to grab my compression gauge and my leak down set and just go through each cylinder. Uh, before we do that, we want to start with a warm engine, so I am going to run the car for a little bit, make sure it's up at operating temperature. Uh, that will allow me to uh, eventually close the door after it's finished running, and the heat coming off of the engine will actually warm it up in here because it's quite cold this morning. But, uh, yeah, let's get to it. out we've got one two three going from your left to right I think <laughs> and four five six um, from all the plugs they look very even except for number four number four has got a little bit of uh, rich richness to it or misfire maybe um, the gap looks okay and the spark plug is definitely new yeah and it's definitely the one that varies from all of them uh, number one might even be running a little bit hot But all the gaps look good, but I'll double check them before putting everything back together But if we're gonna see anything low, maybe it'll be number four, but um, That could just be a uh, ignition issue 
So these are two kits that I usually bust out when I'm doing uh, engine diagnostic, but today we're just doing a test and writing down some figures. So there's my compression tester and my leak down. I've had these guys for years and I've used them countless times. Um, so I'll start with compression and uh, we'll go one to six and see how even everything is. So just a couple things in preparation. Uh, of course I've got my gauge hooked up to number one cylinder to start. I do have my battery charger on the battery um, just to kind of give a charge in between starting cycles. I want to have a, the maximum cranking power that we can have here. Um, obviously all of our ignition is disconnected already so we don't have to worry about that. But uh, I'm not exactly sure where the fuse or relay is for the fuel pump. So I think the easiest way is just to go directly right to the fuel pump and disconnect it because I don't really want to be spraying fuel this whole time while I'm cranking over. Um, and then I really have to figure out how we're going to turn the crank uh, to get a wrench down in there because we do have a double row radiator uh, to do the leak down later on. But I'm ready to crank number one. Let's see what happens. So the first one's about 130, but I think we're going to give that a second crank just to be sure. And number one's definitely 130 PSI. Say it's about 126. I can smell a little bit of fuel, so I might have a little tiny bit of fuel wash. about 130. I think we're going to retest number five. Yeah, we got it to come up. It's at 129. So between all cylinders, we're only two PSI difference, which is very good. So realistically, with those type of compression results, this is a perfectly good, healthy engine. I mean, there'd be no reason to go ahead and do a leak down test, but the tuner wants leak down numbers and any good tuner should probably get them. If they're gonna spend that much time uh, setting up a tune on a car, it's best to know you have a good mechanically running engine beforehand. And I don't blame anyone that uh, requests someone to do that. So to make that a little easier to do, I'm going to actually take the fan blade off. It's just four nuts and the fan blade's off and out of the way. And then I can put a large ratchet right onto the crank and turn it into any position that I need as I'm doing this. Um, this tends to drain out my compressor, so that's going to run on and off quite a bit, I would imagine. Uh, I might cut the audio or just make this little uh, portion of it just the actual results without the compressor running. Start with taking the fan blade out and then I'll hook up to number one and we'll see what we have. Okay, so I'm pretty much set up, ready to go. I've got the fan blade off and out of the way. I have my power bar right on the crank. It's a 30 mil socket that you'll need for the crank. Um, I've got my leak down gauge hooked up to number one and I'm about to give it some air pressure. So I'll be turning the engine over until I see some 
variants ha start to happen indicating that the valves are starting to close up and then I'll start cranking up some pressure to see how much uh, leak down actually leaves that cylinder. I do have other videos of using this gauge um, and probably I'll give I'd probably give a little bit more of a description on how it operates and how to use one in those videos. Uh, I'll try and remember to leave links in the description. Hopefully someone reminds me if I don't. Okay, I just stopped the camera because the compressor had to refill. Like I said, when you're going through this, even at 30 PSI, just leaking complete line pressure, you run out of compressed air pretty fast. But I started coming up on the point where I saw the gauge move. So I'm thinking I should probably try and get maybe just a little further. We'll start adding some air. Can see our leak gauge starting to creep up and before the let's see if I can get it to turn just enough to see what this thing will hold we actually hit zero and the, there's a lot of load on this at this point you have to really hold on to it We'll just relieve all the pressure. So number one actually hit zero, zero leak down, which indicates a perfect cylinder. So now I'll just go along and do two, three, four, five, six, and I won't bother doing too much in between showing you the results just because the compressor constantly fills and it's annoying to listen to. Okay, I'm pretty sure I'm lined up for number two. I can get it to touch zero. Top dead center on number three. It has no problem holding all the pressure. It's at zero percent leak down as well. Okay, we got to top dead center on number four. No problem holding pressure. Leak down is zero percent. Okay, we're on number five. No problem holding zero. I think I want to retest number two at the same time. We'll do the last cylinder and then we'll do number two again. Okay, we're on number six. No problem holding well past. So number six is zero as well. And I'm pretty sure if I go back to number two, it's gonna be zero. The only reason I wanna test number two again is because number five had the lowest compression even though it's only two PSI out. And it just hit zero, so. We'll just rule out number two. Okay, we're on number two again. And it does hit zero. So we have zero cylinder leakage. So I am done the test. The engine passes with flying colors. Um, the variance of 2% between all cylinders, I mean that's so little it's got to be like 1%. The leak down all cylinders at 0% indicate a relatively new engine or what it would seem to be. And then 
kind of texting with Tyler, yes, it uh, it's basically got a thousand kilometers on this engine. Uh, so as he bought it as a used car, someone had previously had the engine built. It does have a bunch of goodies in it and I will try and kind of list them. Uh, maybe I'll put it in the description below as well. But uh, obviously it is a perfectly healthy engine and ready for tuning, whatever's going to happen to it. Uh, it doesn't have like a, a, a very large injector, so I'm not even sure if 400 is stock or not, but um, should be able to get a little bit more power or clean the power band in it. Uh, it does have R34 turbos on it, so there's, there's something the tuner would be able to do there anyway. So yeah, I just basically have to put this all back together. I'm not going to bother showing you guys that. Yeah, if you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here and you haven't already, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Leave your questions and comments further down below. And I'll see you in the next one.